Hello, welcome to another edition of Living Simply Fun. Uh, this is a somewhat special edition as we have today a blast from the past for some people, I suppose. There was a big deal going on a while ago with these. Yeah, it's uh, a Gurkha copper label. That's at least what it affectionately became known as. Why? There's no identifying characteristics other than the Gurkha copper label. Now there's some people who said that these were manufactured by CI and had a Gurkha label slapped on it and that they aren't real Gurkhas and that the flavors aren't Gurkha profile. Um, and so I started digging since I came up with one of these, um, which Rita will be reviewing the cigar too when she heals. Uh, she's got two of these to smoke. I've already smoked one. Now, the thing is that there was also a rumor going around that these were very similar to the Gurkha Empire series. The band is the exact same band as the Empire series. The size is the exact same band, a size as the Empire series. Uh, and there was another one of these floating around that had a kind of tannish looking wrapper. And they were calling it a Sumatra. Well, there's two tannish looking wrappers out of the Empire series, which had six. And then I ran across a place that had hinted at some knowledge of the Empire series that CI got a whole bunch with bad bands on the bottom of them. And uh, the bands had fallen off or something like that. Or Gurkha hadn't put the bands on and they didn't know what they were. And so they just jumbled them all together and sold them as is. Uh, so more than likely, from what I can tell from this, is that it's actually a Gurkha Empire Series 4. Um, which actually had the Brazilian uh, Araparacia Maduro wrapper. Uh, there was a few other Maduros, but uh, this one has tobaccos in it that match up much more with uh, Dominican Palato Cubano uh, tobaccos, and uh, it's kind of got a little spice in it, like a Nicaraguan Lajero in it. So it makes more sense that this would probably, probably be the Empire 4. Uh, just missing the foot band that said Empire 4. Um, the, it is very clear, regardless, that this was blended by the same guy who did the Empire series, uh, and that would have been done at the Fabrica de Tobaccos and blended by Fidel Oliva. Uh, or Oliva. Um, not to be confused with the Oliva family. Uh, different family, his has an S at the end. Um, but again, site I found that at, had his name without the S. But you look him up online, you will find more than likely he's got the S on the end. Um, let's see. Uh, and the binder on this is more than likely uh, a Nicaraguan, so... Uh, anyways, go to the smell test. Go to the smell test. Hello, everyone. Queen Nublet, yeah, Queen Nubby here, so you want me to give that a little sniff or two? Oh, I guess just a mild sweetness off of it, which is very clearly the Brazilian I'm Picking wrapper. up mild sweetness and hints of floral, floral notes. That could be. So, I think, it's, I think it's fairly scentless, and as much as I hate to say it, I don't think that I can 100% identify this, because there's actually two of the Empire series this could be, and it's totally possible that Gurkha released another one, stuck the Empire series copper label on it, and released a totally different cigar that wasn't part of the Empire series and there is no name to it. But more than likely, this is the Empire Series 4. 
uh, just without any uh, labels on it. Um, and I just had my lighter, and here it is. I'm all out of. For some of you out there wondering where I was, really? let me my bag up there. For so, this one, your mm -hmm. bag. For some of you wondering where I was, I was in the office paying bills. Well, Papa here got to enjoy himself. Go ahead. I just gotta boot my tablet up, I think. Very mild flavors, slightly toasty. Um, something vegetable like, but toasty vegetables. A little cedar, perhaps. A little bit of pepper that lingers on the lips, but there's no taste of it. Good cigar so far. I enjoyed the other one. So I went to the cigar shop today and I got some uh, cedar spills. Uh, and I'm going to have to use some of those later. I've always wanted to try to light off a cedar Here's your, spill. Uh, cake. And I'm getting ready to send out a cigar bomb, and I need to get a bodyguard. Sorry, I'm not going to turn it around. <laughs> that is a bodyguard. It's a full secret. And uh, I got these free. Apparently, they wanted to get rid of them to make some space because they only had one left. So I got a bold by Nish Patel. I've always wanted to try a Nish Patel, so that's really good. And uh, then I got a Room 101 Payback. And so I'm going to enjoy trying that, too. And uh, that was another one they tossed in because it was the only one they had left and they wanted to get rid of it. And then I got a St. Louis Ray uh, Reserva Special. Uh, this is a 6x60. Uh, so I look forward to this. This is the one I actually purchased because I wanted to have one cigar for myself. And uh, so ended up having three cigars all because I went in to get a bodyguard for my friend. Uh, and I know Rita's eyeing that bodyguard because it's one of her favorites. But then, uh, even though Rita's not supposed to be smoking, she ended up having to buy these from our friend Mike. Uh, got two cans of Dunhill Early Morning Pipe, and she ended up buying a can of Dunhill Nightcap. Uh, these are like Rita's favorite pipe tobacco, so. And the 965. And you like the 965, but we can't find that around here. And I know you want to try the W.O. Larsons and stuff. And the And Gurkha. the GLPs and the Gurkha and the Cult. The Cult pipe tobacco's got my attention. Why don't you And the Spectre pipe tobacco. Why don't you tell our audience about, if you, they don't know, again, about the pipe. It's horrible out here. Apparently... Cigarette uh, company started uh, selling cigarette tobacco as pipe tobacco so that they could get under a different tax class for roll your own cigarettes. That way you could buy your tobacco dirt cheap and, you know, they were trying to undermine the business of the larger companies. So Gambler, etc., cetera, uh, Premier, uh, Premier Tobacco, uh, those are two of them I know offhand top. Uh, they started selling it as pipe tobacco. Uh, Bugle, too. Uh, those are not pipe tobaccos, though. Those are cigarette tobaccos through and through. Anyways, <coughs> when our state said, hey, children are using their parents' credit cards to buy cigarettes, and they're getting it shipped to home, and uh, they, we don't want children to use their parents' credit cards to get uh, cigarettes uh, shipped to them, so we're going to block all cigarette sales in the state through mail order. Well, not only did they block cigarettes through mail order, they blocked pipe tobaccos too, all because they were trying to stop bag tobacco from getting in so that people could roll their own. They didn't want kids to get that. Well, I don't exactly blame them, but we live in an area of Washington where we have no smoke shop that carries pipe tobacco. And uh, Rita is primarily a pipe smoker. Uh, she'll smoke cigars. She likes cigars. 
we enjoy cigars, but she's a pipe smoker. Through and through, baby. Me, I'm through and through a cigar smoker. I, I prefer these to the pipe. Uh, reason is I don't really want to buy all the briar pipes and stuff like that. I love the look of them, but anyone I buy, if she likes it, she confiscates it. So uh, I got to make sure usually to get rusticated because she doesn't like rusticated pipes. She likes that nice, beautiful looking briar. And I agree. Apple shape. And particularly apple shape, but that won't stop me from a bulldog or anything either. Um, if it's got a good flame or a good color or whatever, mama locks. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> So, anyways, now it's illegal to ship pipe tobacco into the state. Cigars are still fine because kids don't buy these, but that's beginning to become a problem in the state, too, because Black and Mild Swisher Sweets, they're recognized as cigars, and kids are buying them so that they can roll their weed in them. And so our state, trying to stop that, might eventually try to put an end to cigars being shipped into the state too. And that I'm kind of really worried about because, heck, I have no vices other than cigars and everybody kind of needs a vice. I don't gamble, I don't, you know, don't drink. Uh, I, I'm sorry, but it, it's really upsetting when a state considers alcohol to be healthier for you than a cigarette or a cigar or a pipe. Uh, alcohol kills brain cells, it kills liver, it puts more people in the hospital than tobacco does. And honestly, it's the government's testing of nuclear weapons in the 50s and the fallout and everything getting into the groundwater and the food that causes cancer. And they just want to blame it on something. So they, they choose something where somebody's like, ew, that's nasty. I don't like that. So then they're like, oh, tobacco causes cancer because there's too many people that don't like the smell. Well, oh well. Uh, I guess that's the way the world turns, but... As the world turns! <laughs> I think it's absurd to ban anything, period. Or try to put a stop to people doing something because you don't agree. But that's a personal rant. Anyways, this cigar, I'm still getting a light woodsy taste. Um... For some of you out there wondering for a second, I was scratching the heel of my shoe. I'm trying to get used to these new sandals that Aaron picked yep. up today. I bought her sandals today. I bought her a couple shirts today. And, Wearing one of them. Uh, I just figured, you know, uh, she needs more stuff, and so I'm there to buy it. But this month, she's also helping take care of food, so it works that way, too. Don't forget what I'm getting from Mama's Day. Mm-hmm. Mm, but you bought it and you're treating me, even though it's your celebration, I guess, from the dogs. <laughs> Don't worry, Papa. Father's Day, there's going to yeah. be steak on sale, And I'm too. probably going to have to buy that for you then. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be my treat to you. <laughs> so, anyways, um, enough, uh, enough said right now about this. I'll get into the halfway point and I'll let you know how it's progressed and all that stuff. So, see you shortly. And where did the... You're the one ah, that moved. There right? it is. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to the halfway point of this Gurkha Copper Label question mark cigar, which is more than likely the... Um, I wrote it down over there. The Empire Series uh, Empire 4. Series 4, yes. Yep. Uh, I know the 5 is a Connecticut, and... I think the three is a Habano. Uh, the first one, I don't know what it is. It's, it looks like a Sumatra, but I think they have that as a Connecticut shade, maybe. Anyways, flavors on this. Um, uh, very creamy. Slightly salty. Uh, just a faint hit of something like blue cheese. Just reminiscent of... Uh, oh, man, did you have to do that? Yeah. I'll take blame. It wasn't uh, me. Uh, there's maybe some honey hints. Um, still kind of toasty. Uh, the flavors are marrying pretty well. Loving a stick. Love the other one I had. Um... Uh, 
I will say it's not very similar to any Gurkhas I've had in the past, but it does remind me of Gurkha, so whoever ended up saying that this has no flavor profiles of a Gurkha obviously hasn't smoked many Gurkhas, because uh, this ranks right up there in flavor, flavor tones of some of their others, like the Shaggy Foot and the... Uh, um, the Warlord and the Beauty and the um, Ancient Warrior. Um, it, it definitely has some of that flavor. Uh, um, I was just going to say, most Gurkhas, when we got back into cigar smoking, the king size Gurkhas, when I got a sampler, most of those cigars in the sampler, which was uh, eight and a half by 52, was uh, purely earth. It was more earth flavor well, than anything. Well, that was the Warlord for certain. Uh, the Ancient Warrior wasn't. Remember the Shaggy Foot we both thought was vomit flavor. <laughs> uh, it was extreme vomit a cigar. We could barely make it through it. But um, It's one of those cigars you'd like to hand off the, to your friends. The Beauty and the Elegance were both very good. And no, I'm not being mean. I'm just saying if you don't like something that's vomitous, you pass it off to your friend, maybe they'd like it. Yeah. But uh, you ended up smoking the second one. You didn't want to end up sharing it with me. I was like, I'm out of cigars. And you're like, no, you're not even getting the vomitous one. <laughs> you were just being mean to me then. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this kind of fits the flavor profile of something unique that stands out on its own, which is a lot of Gurkhas kind of sit in that zone of out on its own. But there are just so many Gurkhas out. I, I think that they open their mouth and a new Gurkha is born. Um, uh, and it's it. Ken it's, uh, uh, Yosha, was it? Uh, Ken Han Sosha. Or yeah, Ken, Ken Sosha. Han, yeah. Anyways, uh, one thing I've heard about uh, Gurkhas is if you want to know you're getting a good Gurkha, make sure it's on Gurkha's own website. If it's not listed on Gurkha's website as one of theirs, it's more than a likely uh, blend that they had had toyed with, left in their warehouse. And somebody said, hey, let us buy all these, uh, and slapped on a Gurkha label with a name. And although they're technically Gurkhas, they were Gurkhas that didn't make the cut. Uh, or the other deal is that uh, uh, Cigar International or some company like Cigar.com or whatever uh, bought the rights to a name for Gurkha and slapped the Gurkha label on it. I want to apologize. My email... My email app is going crazy tonight. Sometimes I get a lot of spam, so that's what you're hearing in the background. So, I figure at the halfway point here, I'll uh, inform you of the sticks that I got coming in for next month that I get to review. I showed you the ones earlier. Uh, me and Rita will both be reviewing the uh, Deadwood Cigar Company's uh, Sweet Jane, made by Drew Estate for them. Uh, we will also be trying the uh, Fat Bottom Betty uh, the, for Deadwood uh, Tobacco Company also, uh, made by Drew Estate as well. Uh, we will be doing the CAO Osa Soul, uh, which me and Rita both enjoyed those, and I bought a box of them because I re I've missed those, and I haven't had one in a while, and I really like them. Um, and then uh, I got a deal on some... Uh, um, uh, Danish Royal, or du it's Danish Royal, uh, extra strength double Lajero cigars, uh, so we'll be trying those, and, uh, I remember years ago, uh, I, I was really interested in some cigars, and they were made by Sam Lesia. Well, anyways, I found out that Sam Lesia retired from cigar making and just recently came back to cigar ma uh, making. And I found a deal on some Sam Lesia's, uh, his newest blend, after a three-year hiatus from blending cigars and making cigars. And I was like, oh, yes, I have to try this. So uh, I got some of those, and I'm really looking forward to those. Um, it's going to be an interesting month for some cigars. For all of you out there, I haven't chosen my cigars yet. I'm just paying off the bills first. Then I will figure out what I'm going to be getting. Right now, I drive along and share it with you, and Aaron didn't tell you that with taxes, I paid $62.11 for three tins of pipe tobacco. 
Yeah. And we promised Mike that if he brought him in, we'd pick him up. Uh, because we're really trying to get someone around here to actually carry some pipe tobaccos. But it doesn't help much when he brings in two or three of the same tin over and over again. Uh, we are ones who really like to experience things. Uh, we like to know what's out there. We like to sample new stuff. Uh, I mean, I and wanna... when we're always smoking the same thing, it gets kind of bland. And that's why Rita really wants to get a hold of some W.O. Larson. Oh, nobody around us sells. The closest place is 150 miles away. 80 miles, uh, yeah. And, and they don't always have it. You have to call in advance, and then you can get down there, and they might not have it again. So that's kind of obnoxious, and that's an Indian reservation. Also, I'm going to try Gurkhas. Gurkha tobacco. Spectre. Great, I'm going out. Spectre tobacco. Yeah, we want to try the Spectre pipe tobacco. Uh, not to mention the Spectre cigar. Um, but the pipe tobacco looks really good, too. And then there's some cult pipe tobacco that we want to try. And uh, Gurkha makes a pipe tobacco we want to try. We've tried one of the Drew Estates, which was really good, and we've tried uh, three of the CAOs. Mm -hmm. Because of that, I've been asking Mike to bring in Gurkhas and W.O. Larson. Because at least the one, uh, I, I'd say more uh, uh, bong shop, <laughs> uh, a pot shop, uh, they, they have the... Uh, CAO flavors uh, pipe tobaccos. Uh, so at least we got to try some of them. Yeah, this actually tunneled right in front of you. It, it had no problems up until I was doing this video. So sometimes there seems to be a little burn issue on this, and if you notice, I wasn't exactly letting it sit and not doing anything. Uh, just taking my time on it and trying to enjoy it. So, anyways, uh, I will uh, get back to you in the final third of this and let you know how it's progressed. And uh, at this point, I think it's probably going to remain the same, even though I am beginning to get a little peppery flavor come in. So, see you shortly. Welcome back to the final third of this Gurkha Copper label that's likely an Empire Series 4. Uh... Since I don't have an Empire Series 4 to test this against, I can't tell you for certain. But, you know, enough rumors out there that that copper label, this, is an Empire Series label. It means that the footer's missing. It's only a rumor if people start believing it's a rumor. <laughs> well... There, there was a brief window going around where there was these copper labels issued with no, uh, no uh, foot band, and a lot of people thought they were the Empire series, but there was no way to prove what they were, so they just went down as the copper label, uh, and so more than likely that's what they are. I think they're totally gone from the market now, uh, but you know. Good deal. That was a good deal. She likes cheese balls. So, anyways, the flavor profile on this is very mild to medium in body. I would say slightly more towards the medium size. A little bit of a kick in nicotine, but not too heavy. Uh, more than I'm usually used to in cigars, though, but not too much. Um, the flavors in this are... There's enough complexity of uh, creamy cedar kind of salty, cheesy uh, mix that uh, it, it's, a, it's a nice blend together. And, uh, nice marriage? Yes, it marries very nicely. So He likes to use those words. Well, it's actually a cooking term for like when you're making spaghetti sauce. If you're throwing in seasonings and spices that conflict with each other, it does not marry. Uh, sometimes it takes two to three days of letting something sit together for it to have a chance to just kind of fuse together. It's why you marinate steaks. Uh, in fact, it actually comes from the term when you're talking cooking for marinate. Uh, and marry, marinate, but it's a little more than that. Is you know, The flavors combine to, you know, almost like a marriage. So, 
it, it's kind of a cross between marinade and marriage. And certain things don't marry right. They they just don't. Talking uh, talking about funny things for a second. Can you believe cheese balls are now sold at Office Depot? <laughs> yeah. You got Office Depot cheese balls. <laughs> But, you know, it, it's a bigger jar, actually, than the one that they had at uh, Safeway for the same price. Uh, but, anyways, if you happen to find Gurkha Copper Labor Dark Wrapper or Light Wrapper, uh, either case, I would say probably pick them up, particularly the Dark Wrapper. But seeing that the... Empire Series had four different dark wrappers. Each one had different tobaccos in it. I know one was a Mexican uh, San Andreas heavy filler. Um, you might get a different flavor between this one and that one. And honestly, to tell you the truth, I think this one has a slightly different flavor than the other one I had. Because uh, this one actually tastes better, burns better. The other one kind of had... Uh, uh, some pepper quality to it, and obviously more Lajero in it. Uh, so, I honestly think that these were just Empire Series with missing labels, and they just threw them together and sold them on seabeds. Uh, well, I do have a question then. Was the other one you smoked in Nebraska? Mm -hmm. So, it could have just had to do with different air down there, too. That's something that a lot of people don't take into effect. I've noticed that when I smoke a cigar at Rita's place, and a, another one at my place, and another one of the same type outside, I can end up with three different flavors based on the air circulating through the air, the smells that are in the apartment. Everybody's house has kind of a, a scent that is their house. Like if I walk into my dad's, immediately my childhood floods back to me from the scents. Uh, there is a stink to the house that is always going to be there, uh, and uh, it gets into clothing in Ohio. More likely, and, a and hound I, smell. It, it is a kind of houndish smell. My dad likes hounds, um, but my place has a slightly different scent to it than Rita's place, and outdoors has a different air quality. And that hotel room, it seemed to have a cleaner feel without so much, and it was a smaller room, and I think I notice more in the smell of smoke than I do here. Talking about cigars for a minute, before my surgery, right, Aaron will vouch for me on this one, because he always does. We didn't know who the hell would call on the phone in the hotel. Yep, Aaron, we got a call in the hotel saying, it's beginning to get into the hall, can you open up a window in there? Well, actually, then I realized there's a gap under the hallway, uh, front door that goes into the hallway that was like that wide. Mm -hmm. So the smoke was going down to the floor and out through into the hall. So I just uh, took a towel and covered they up the, the, the vent on too. Yeah, so I just took a towel, put it over the slot under the door, and then I turned on the vent and opened the window. And then we never had another complaint the whole time we were there. So. Uh, but that's actually when she was still actually puffing on one while we were down there. Even though you weren't supposed to. Uh, Anyways, I have... Before I go, I just wanted to say, for fun, I'm pooping gizzicles because I can. We at Living Simply and Fun just love doing cigar reviews. I will eventually do some pipe tobacco reviews and... A review on cheese balls because this is living simply and fun. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm really looking forward to trying those two cigars from Deadwood Tobacco Company. Uh, I contacted them. I said uh, a lot of people are recommending these to me. And I was curious uh, if, uh, if they had a sampler of them. And then I looked on their site. You know, I said, you know what, I think I'm just going to go with these and uh, I, I won't go into details, but uh, all is good. So I'm really looking forward to uh, trying that. I, I do have to contact them because I don't like doing a review without knowing what type of wrapper and tobacco is in it. Maybe they'll be able to tell me, even though it's not put, published on their site. I might also find a place online that tells them, but I'd prefer to get it directly from, uh, I think his name's uh, Vaughn Boyd, uh, who's the proprietor there. 
the information. I know they're made by Drew Estate for them. So um, are they actually out of Deadwood, South Dakota? Yes, they are, and their uh, store is actually underground in the old jail. And you can buy beer there, so you can actually drink in an old jail in Deadwood. And apparently, they oftentimes have character actors who were, uh, you know, doing the Wild West gun shows come in for a cigar. So it's not too often, to, uh, uh, not too rare to uh, see an old-fashioned cowboy come in and sit down at the bar next to you. In fact, I really would love to go to their store. I, really, I if I get a chance to go on a vacation for myself, it might just be Deadwood. Uh, excuse me. For all of you out there that don't know this, for a little bit of information, the guy who made the saddles for Quigley Down Under and the saddlebags is from Deadwood, South Dakota. And I've been to Down, uh, Deadwood, but I haven't been there since I was like six years old. And by the way, that was a pretty decent long hangnail. It was probably about a half inch long. So it's fixed time. And I've noticed if you don't actually let enough of the wrapper burn off, it'll just do it again. So uh, that's one reason I like this uh, Old Faithful lighter. It's been around for years and years and years, and it still has no problems. Uh, we were ta I was talking with a friend the other day who was talking about his zombie lighter. Well, this is Old Faithful, and this was such a good lighter. I bought this one thinking it would be just as good, but it don't light on its own except for maybe one out of every, like, 50 clicks, so I'm not going to go and keep doing that, but I have to light it with another lighter. <laughs> so I guess they're hit and miss, but I got lucky, and we have Old Faithful. It never fails. Every once in a while, it won't spark, but... Or it'll spark, start to burn, and flame will go out. But, hey, it's good. Anyways, Anyways long video. Long video, but uh, and, uh, we will we cut it here. Yes, and we will let you know when the Deadwood cigars come in. I will get the info just for records of the one who did the movie Saddles and stuff. Oh, for, uh, and, uh, do, uh, oh, oh, and our theme song is from Quigley, by the way. So, Deadwood ties there. Um... And Rita will be doing her own review of this eventually, too. So stay tuned for that one as well. Uh, do leave questions, comments, concerns, feedback, suggestions, uh, add and subscribe, uh, and all that good jazz. Uh, if you've tried this and you, you remember it well enough, uh, please feel free to share your thoughts, whether you agreed or disagreed. Uh, just keep it nice is all we ask. And enjoy, enjoy every puff.